the alley-oop to Kizar to the glory days at the stick. From who's got it better than us to brick by brick. It's always the 49ers way from off season to game day. Yeah, we talk back. It's the 49ers cut back. It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show. Going to be talking about a training camp battle that's going to be heating up really quickly when the 49ers get into training camp. These guys are an absolute collision course. And that's Demetrius Flanagan Fouls, the veteran against Marcelino McCrary Ball, who's looking to make an impact in his sophomore season with the 49ers. Of course, McCrary Ball did not make the 49ers 53-man roster coming out of training camp, but he was highly touted and very much so uh, the coaching staff talks in a positive manner about Marcelino McCurry Ball. So we got DFF versus MMB. It's going to be a fun matchup, and you might ask me, hey, why are you putting these two particular players against each other at the linebacker position? Well, if you watched my breakdown of the depth chart, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles is the 149er that has experience playing Mike linebacker, and he has experience playing Mike linebacker for the 49ers. Flanagan Fowles, of course, has been with the 49ers organization for a few years and has developed the ability to play Mike. The 49ers lost their normal backup Mike linebacker when Aziz Alshire went to Tennessee. When he went to the Tennessee Titans, out went the capable body that could step in in case of an injury to Fred Warner and be able to lead the charge for the 49ers defense. That's not what Dre Greenlaw does. Dre Greenlaw plays Will Linebacker. He pretty much plays there all the time. He doesn't move a whole lot, except for when the 49ers get into sub packages. When the 49ers get into a nickel or a dime, uh, usually the nickel, you'll see uh, Greenlaw stay inside and play the run and play the interior part of the defense, while Fred Warner will go out in coverage and cover on the outside a little bit, sometimes in the slot, picking up a tight end, as you've seen in the playoff game, picking up C.D. Lamb. That's where they kind of switch off. But it doesn't change who makes the calls. Fred Warner still makes the calls and is still the general of the defense. So, Dre Greenlaw is not equipped to wearing the helmet. He's not somebody that's made the calls in the huddle or made the, the changes on the field. Could the 49ers ultimately go to that at some point? Yes, they could. But that hasn't been what they've done throughout uh, Greenlaw's career and even in OTAs and minicamp this year of 2023. So the 49ers have a little bit of a conundrum. Who do you play at the Mike linebacker spot behind Fred Warner? That guy is going to make this football team because right now there could be a battle at the Sam linebacker spot. We know Aziz Alshire leaves, that leaves a vacancy, and you have a lot of suitors for that position. Planning and fouls is one of them. When you start to hear that OTAs and minicamp showed us that McCrary Ball is going to take some reps at Mike Linebacker, it starts to make you think. If the 49ers value Marcelino McCrary Ball as a Mike Linebacker, that will be an avenue for him to be able to make the team. In that case, his direct competition for that backup middle linebacker job is Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. So one of these guys is going to make the roster, and one of them may not. Now, there's always the chance both of them could make it with one of them playing the off-ball linebacker and not Mike. But the reality is one or both of them will make it. So they're in direct competition with each other to see who will be the backup Mike linebacker behind Fred Warner. McCrary Ball comes in, and he's a guy that was a little undersized in his rookie season, but showed a lot of speed, showed a quick transition ability to play linebacker coming from safety. He was very highly touted by 49ers coaches, enough so that when he came off the practice squad, most practice squad players get a futures contract. That's not what they did with Marcelino McCrary Ball. They signed him to a one-year deal. They value McCrary Ball, and for good reason. You could see the instincts and the way that he went about playing the game last year in the preseason, including having an interception but making plays and tackles that made you think, hmm, there's something there. 
And the 49ers didn't shy away from the fact that they really liked him and liked his abilities. They liked his intangibles, his intelligence. Those are all good things for the San Francisco 49ers and for Marcelino McCurry Ball. Yet standing in his way is Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. Now, Flanagan Fowles wasn't tendered a restricted free agent contract, and they basically let him go. He ended up coming back to the 49ers on a team-friendly deal. And part of the reason Flanagan Fowles is somebody the 49ers want on their rosters, number one, the ability to play all three linebacker positions. Number two, he knows exactly what Coach Hollins wants from a linebacker. He has nice chemistry with Fred Warner and Drake Greenlaw, uh, but also he can compete at the Sam Backer spot with Oren Burks if that's what's needed. You throw in the fact that you got a guy that's really good at special teams, and that means you've got a formidable force that has all the abilities you're looking for in a backup linebacker to make the team. So what does McCrary Ball have to do to beat the veteran Demetrius Flanagan Fowles and make this football team? I think he just needs to continue to uh, increase his abilities as far as his feeling, his flow, getting downhill, shedding tack or setting blocks uh, to be able to make tackles. He's got to show that he's a legitimate force at linebacker. We've seen Flanagan Fowles improve tremendously over the last year. It was not that long ago that he was really struggling to transition to playing linebacker in the NFL. He was handling special teams at a high level, but handling linebacker was a struggle. It's not like his stats are really great either. Most of them come from special teams, but we did see him make a couple impact plays, including a sack last year. That's Flanagan Fowles. We haven't been able to see Marcelino McCurry Ball play in a game yet during the regular season, but that could be incoming. So the 49ers have to decide who can handle making the calls the best, who can be able to adjust on the fly, that's going to be interesting. You would think that would give Flanagan Fowles a little bit of an advantage because he understands the 49ers scheme and terminology and has probably seen a lot more from imposing offenses, including the ones that they've played before in the NFC West. But Marcelina McCurry Ball has Demetrius Flanagan Fowles in a few categories physically. Number one, he brings more of a boom when he hits. He comes in there like a guided missile and makes plays but he hits the instincts to go ahead and get interceptions. The ability to cover in space definitely is something the 49ers like. Also the sideline to sideline abilities there with Marcelino McCurry ball. So the question marks is how much has Marcelino McCurry ball improved from last year during training camp? I was out there and I saw him improve every day that I was able to watch him. It just seemed like he was having a steady incline in his abilities and also the ability to take in more knowledge and then be able to apply it to what he was doing on the field. I thought he improved rapidly, and you saw that rapid improvement continue through the preseason. Here's where the problem lies. We don't know how much better he got from the last preseason game all the way till now. How much has that practice benefited Marcelino McCurry Ball? How much of the playbook has he been able to consume? How much has he learned from Fred Warner about being able to determine what an offense is going to do and be able to check your defense in and out to move defensive linemen where you need to move them to make sure you can get the correct strength call called. There's a lot of things that go into playing Mike linebacker. And Flanagan Fowles might, in fact, be a little ahead right now of Marcelino McCurry Ball as far as knowing what to do and being able to operate a second unit of linebackers for this 49ers defense. But that doesn't mean that McCurry Ball can't catch him and pass him. Like I said, physically, gifted-wise, Marcelino McCurry Ball is very gifted, and he's going to be able to do all the physical things you need him to do. The question more so is how quickly can he pick up on what he's supposed to do as far as defensive calls. If he can handle himself, he's going to slide right in there because I know the 49ers would love to have a linebacker that just flashes the way Marcelino McCurry Ball does. In fact, the 49ers would love for all three of their young, young linebackers to be able to make an impact at some point. With Marcelino McCurry Ball, D. Winters, and Jalen Graham, you have three young guys the 49ers can feel confident may be able to eventually step into the starting lineup if asked to and be able to play at a pretty high level. 
That's why they continue to bring these guys in. The one thing we can all say is that Coach Hollins and D'Amico Ryans have always been able to develop linebackers. Now with D'Amico on the move and the head coach in Houston, it falls on Hollins. But we've seen so much success with undrafted free agents and late round draft picks at the linebacker position that you almost see it as a foregone conclusion that it's going to happen. Coach Hollins is expected to shape Marcelino McCurry Ball, an undrafted free agent, into the next big thing. And Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, another one of those guys, is trying to hold on to his roster spot. Because if Flanagan Fowles doesn't win the backup Mike linebacker job, there's a real chance he doesn't make this 49ers roster. That means he's on the practice squad, headed to Houston, headed to the New York Jets, trying to find a place to fit in the NFL. With a special team's prowess, he could probably end up landing somewhere, but he could end up just landing on the 49ers practice squad. That's how important this battle is going to be in training camp. The veteran versus the upstart, the athletic ability versus the knowledge, and how quickly can that knowledge come to that young player? McCurry Ball gets it. He's going to win this job, and he's going to be the backup to Fred Warner at Mike. While he's there, he might as well compete with Oren Burks, potentially win the Sam linebacker job, even though I think Galen Graham and D. Winters are going to have something to say about that. So it's going to be lots of battles at the linebacker position, some of them just to make this roster, others to get a starting job. But one thing we do know, the 49ers continue to build talent, and they continue to develop talent. They got two of the best linebackers in the entire NFL. One of them was a third-round pick. One was a fifth. Just talent being developed in San Francisco, and I'm excited about Marcelina Mercury Ball potentially being developed into a really big-time star for the 49ers defense in the future. Uh, the future is just starting from Marcelina Mercury Ball, and the future of this channel is going in a good direction. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already on the push for 4K. Really appreciate everyone coming through and watching. You can find episodes of Slightly Offsides and The Ant Hill Show over on Patreon. And a really good discussion between me and Jay Hill about Debo Samuel and what happens if Debo struggles. Go check those out over on Patreon. And, and plenty of more content coming right here on YouTube. Until next time, stay safe and remember the right way is always the 49ers way.